Okay, good evening, everybody. We just want to say, first of all, thank you very much for joining us for the Time Travelling Environmentalist Guide to Leicester. I'm Rachel Holmes. I'm a postgraduate researcher here in the University of Leicester, and I'm going to be your guide through tonight's talks. But don't worry, you are in very capable hands. We have some of our finest time travellers with us tonight who are going to take us on a journey through one billion years of environmental change in the city. But before we head off, a few safety warnings. Please remember to keep your arms and legs inside of the time machine at all times. In the case of an emergency, exits can be found behind me to my right and at the back of the room. That's also where you can find the bathrooms should you need them. Um, and in the very unexpected circumstance of a fire, there is an emergency gathering point just out the front there. So without further ado, our first time traveler this evening is Professor Mark Williams. He's an expert in environmental change, paleontology and earth evolution, and the author of several popular science books, including The Goldilocks Planet and most recently, The Cosmic Oasis. So without further ado, over to Mark to take us back to the beginning. Thank you very much, Rachel. Thank you very much, Rachel. Okay, folks, we're going to start by going out to the cosmos with its hundreds of billions of galaxies, each with hundreds of billions of stars. And we're going to find an alien civilization out there, and we're going to jump into our faster than light spacecraft, and we're going to travel thousands of light years across space, because we've detected somewhere in this vast universe where we think there's life. So we've traveled now our thousands of light years, and we've arrived at this planet. It's not a strange place to you, because it's planet Earth, but it's a very strange place to the aliens. But we've arrived here a billion years ago. So it's a very, very different world from the kind of world that we know today. Even then, though, even a billion years ago, this is already an old planet. It's been evolving for several billion years. And life at the surface of this planet has been making it a habitable place, just as it does today, because life is so important for preserving the space that we live on. Now we're going to send down a landing craft because our crew have detected the place where they think the future Leicester city is going to grow. Remember, we're a billion years back here. So down goes the landing craft. But, oh dear, our expedition doesn't start well, because we're back a billion years ago, and there is no Leicester, because there is no land at this time. So we've gone splash into the sea. Um, not a really great start, but we'll, we'll redeem it as we go on. In fact, we have to wait another 500 million years or so before we get a landscape around us where we can actually land our spacecraft. And it's going to be a landscape which is born out of an ancient island arc. Because once upon a time, long ago, this is what Leicestershire would have looked like. You'd have to go to somewhere like Java today or, the, or Japan to see this kind of context. But this is how our landscape was born. And now we're going to land on the surface and we're back more than half a billion years ago. And at this time, Leicester would have looked a bit like this. Um, we would have found um, maybe a very primitive kind of algae living in the, in the aquatic realms and lakes, for example, and maybe a very, very thin veneer of algae across the land. But nothing like you see today, nothing like the complex biosphere on land at this time. But now we're going to dive below the sea. And when we get into the sea, when we look in the oceans around Leicester at this time, we're going to find a complex biosphere already teeming with a whole range of different life. And amongst that early life, we may be finding the origins of some of the earliest animals. And they're preserved at Bradgate Park um, nearby to where we are. So Leicester is very, very important in terms of understanding the evolution of the biosphere. So already half a billion years ago, Leicestershire has a complex biosphere. But that surface biosphere, just as the rest of the biosphere on our planet, is powered fundamentally by the energy of the sun. It is light that powers ecosystems on our planet. As time has elapsed over the ensuing 500 million years between that time and the present, sometimes the sea has come in so that the Leicestershire area has been below the sea. And other times, over tens of millions of years, the sea has gone out so that Leicestershire rose again as the land. Let's just look at some of the things that may have, may have swum by um, in these times when the land was covered by the sea. Um, so if we'd been back 520 million years ago, we might have found trilobites swimming past us. Wonderful creatures, 
far distant relatives of scorpions that live on the land today. Let's travel forward in time. Geologists are used to traveling forward in vast amounts of time. So now we've come to about 183 million years ago when Leicestershire is covered by a warm tropical sea. And in that sea, we might find majestic ammonites swimming around, relatives of living squid and octopus. But in between those times, when Leicestershire was beneath the sea, sorry, when, when Leicestershire was above the sea, um, there was land here. Sometimes that land represented bad times. So it was desert here for many times in the past, over a long period of time, in fact, and that's preserved in our local rock record. But other times, it's been really verdant. So if we went back 50 million years ago, the Leicestershire landscape may have looked something like this, a kind of subtropical, biodiverse um, ecosystem. But always, this is the point we want to make to you tonight, these ecosystems are powered by the energy of the sun. This is what's driving the primary energy source for life on our planet. And that's the case both when Leicester was on land. So here back in the Carboniferous 300 million years ago, the tropical rainforests that produced our coal measures were powered by the energy of the sun. But also ecosystems in the sea, when Leicestershire was covered by water, were also powered by the energy of the sun, trapped in countless tiny phytoplankton that were living in the oceans, again, the basis of the food chain. Sometimes there was more energy available to the ecosystem. So during the times of those tropical rainforests of the Carboniferous 300 million years ago, this landscape would have been really verdant, trapping vast amounts of energy that could then be drawn down through the ecosystem. But other times, as Leicester drifted on its plate tectonic journey, it drifted through areas that were associated with the desert belt. And so the land was sparse and there was much less energy to flow through the ecosystem. And there have been times also when the ecosystem here, the biosphere, has effectively been in suspended animation. So if we were here 600,000 years ago, this is what the Leicestershire landscape would have looked like. It would have been completely encased in ice. It would have looked like the Antarctic or the Arctic. Well, perhaps as long ago as half a million years ago, people started to walk through this landscape. Homo heidelbergensis, for example, may have hunted and gathered here. But always, over this vast swathe of time that we've been looking at, the ecosystem did not exceed the energy and resources available to it. And it's that which allowed the biosphere to sustain itself over hundreds of millions of years. Until something changed and people began to settle in the British landscape. And this began to occur about 8,000 years ago. It's a premonition of something yet to come with the foundation of our city about 2,000 years ago as Roman Leicester. That premonition of something yet to come means that you and I as a species will have implications in the way that we manage the landscape around us for everything that lives within the landscape, as we are going to see with the brilliant PhD students who are going to follow me um, after this talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>